I really wanted to bring you a uh, episode five to finish off this series from a local audio shop called Millennium Music from down the road uh, in Hockley, which is a just an area just down the road here, to find out if they could give me an idea of a uh, hundred pounds, what you can get for a hundred pound for a mic or um, a video card or a webcam or a variety of different things that music shops now sell. And unfortunately, they were super busy moving the shop around. So instead of giving you all the different areas, I thought I'd break this final piece down about um, uh, assets to consider to get uh, when you're a small business. So I've broke this down into a bunch of different areas. I've, as you can see here, this is the normal setup that I use for doing my fiver gigs here in the studio. I have the blue snow snowball mic. These cost about anywhere between 50 pounds and uh, 100 pounds. Probably pick one up in the States for like $50. Great microphone, I'm not using it at the moment, using a lapel mic. Uh, and I've broken it down into things that you should maybe be looking at for your first uh, foray, if you like, into doing web uh, video for your small business. And I broke it down to software, recording, input, and hosting. And instead of doing reviews about those kind of products and those services, what I've done is I've put those as links in the blog post. Uh, go and check those out, have a look through it. Some of those are low end to medium. There's also a few little hosting packages in there and places that you can actually put your video content when you've made it. Um, I'm not gonna go into all of them because it'll take quite some time and I was hoping that this guy in the shop would talk through some stuff, but he didn't do it. Um, other areas that I wanted to cover, consider using Google calendars um, as part of your strategy to get this content out there on the web. Um, start sharing Google calendars with other people in your team, uh, set up dates of when you're going to record. We have a process of sort of draft, record, edit and distribute. So on Wednesday we record our shows. If I get chance I quickly edit them on Wednesday evening, drop them in between the intro and outro, do noise reduction on them, uh, cut out little bits where I'm, I'm in an iron like I'm, I'm doing now, probably cut that bit out. That normally works really well. Sometimes whenever we don't get the video done, we post it on the Thursday and then Friday we sort of distribute it. So that's pretty much the four main areas to think about when doing web um, distribution for your, for your video for a small business. Because I know you're super busy, you're looking for clients, you're totally out there all the time, you're going to networking mixers, you're trying to build up the client base, but also at the same time as building up your client base, we tend to not really celebrate our success stories of what we're of the customers that we are working with. Um, so draft, record, edit, and distribute, they're the sort of four key areas that I would think about you know, really honing into. Taking time to reflect, this is a huge one for me. Um, have a look at the stats and figures. If you're doing stuff on the Wednesday, and then you're sort of pushing it out or editing it and blogging it on the Thursday, pushing it out on the Friday. Give it a week before you actually sit down and do the videos on the Wednesday, the following Wednesday. Go through the stats, have a look at how it performed the week before. If it's not very much traffic to it, are you pushing it out in the right places? Are you putting it on Twitter? Are you pushing it in the right forums? Are people watching your stuff? Maybe you need to start doing a mailing list that links in all the videos you've been working on. Maybe it's a video that people are not even interested in. Are you sending out a poll to ask these people what they're looking for? Remember, outreach into your little mailing list to people looking at your business is crucial. One of the things that we have just started to do is A-B split testing. Now, you don't have to totally understand how this works. Basically, there is one version of a page and there is a second version of the page, A and B. You try different iterations, different variations on the same thing and see how people react to it. Mainly, um, A-B splash pages are used for landing pages. It's a single page. It might be for a sign-up or people joining your mailing list. Normally, have a video on there. If they're interested in seeing more, they click on a button. It's just the way to change different layouts, try different layouts, and see how people react to that layout. Or is one layout working better than another one? Is it that people are clicking this big box, or they're clicking this box, or they're looking at this video? It's a really good way of testing what works and it can be really good for driving people to your mailing list and, and gaining more traffic. Mm -hmm.